Welcome. Today is uh, June the 11th, and it is the feast day of the Apostle Barnabas. One of the Apostles, men of the New Testament, Barnabas, was born um, on Cyprus. His name was Joseph, converted shortly after Pentecost, and he gave up all the possessions and received the name Barnabas, son of consolation, because of his helpful, optimistic nature. Barnabas um, assisted the newly converted Paul and accompanied him for a while on the first missionary journey. Tradition says that Barnabas was martyrs in Cyprus during the 60s. And so we remember Barnabas today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, you filled St. Barnabas with faith and the Holy Spirit and sent him to convert the nations. Help us to proclaim the gospel by word and deed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And because it is a feast day of an apostle, we're moving from the, the readings from Kings uh, to the Acts of the Apostles. We're looking today at chapter 11, verses 21 to 26, and then jumping to chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. And two selections from the Acts describe Barnabas as a good man who helped the growing church in Antioch and who assisted St. Paul. So we hear about this in today's reading. A great number believed and were converted to the Lord. News of this eventually reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, resulting in Barnabas being sent to Antioch. On his arrival, he rejoiced to see the evidence of God's favor. He encouraged them all to remain firm in their commitment to the Lord, since he himself was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. Thereby, large numbers were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas went off to Tarsus to look for Saul. Once he had found him, he brought him back to Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church and instructed great numbers. It was in Antioch that the disciples were called Christians for the first time. There were in the church of Antioch certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, known as Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manon, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. On one occasion, while they were engaged in the liturgy of the Lord and were fasting, the Holy Spirit spoke to them, Set apart Barnabas and Saul for me to do the work for which I have called them. Then, after they had fasted and prayed, they imposed hands on them and sent them off. Why does the Archbishop of the Orthodox of Cyprus always sign his name with red ink? Is privilege granted to a predecessor uh, in the 5th century, according to the tradition of the people of Cyprus, a grave was discovered in 477 AD, and it was found in the grave a body of a man holding the copy of, John, of Matthew's Gospel. Clergy and people conclude that it could only be the body of Barnabas. Their bishop journeyed then to Constantinople and presented the Emperor Zeno with the, uh, the Gospel. So delighted was he that he granted this bishop a privilege reserved only to the emperor, the use of red ink. And to this day, the Archbishop of Cyprus enjoys this token of the emperor's favor of centuries ago. Cyprus remains proud of its son. Born into the island's Jewish community, Barnabas became an outstanding figure in the infant church in Jerusalem. He did not have the authority of the Twelve Apostles, but he gave moral leadership. And the new name given to Joseph, some Cyprus tells us much. Barnabas means son of encouragement. And during Saul's um, bitter persecution, he must have been a source of, of, in, of courage and also of hope for all his brothers and sisters. And one day he would be the one 
who would give a special welcome and support to the newly converted Paul, his future missionary companion. So Barnabas calls us to encourage one another at a difficult time in the story of the church. And so he encourages you and me to assist and to support one another in the difficult time of our own personal stories. He also reminds us that moral leadership can come from any of us, no matter what position we may hold in the institutional church. We can entrust ourselves to his prayers and know that we have the ability to speak, calling others to the Christian way of life, following the master who is not Barnabas, the master who is Jesus. So we, we take really an opportunity then um, to thank Barnabas and for his witness today as is writ, read for us in the Acts of the Apostles and, and realize that um, there is um, pride in knowing our family and knowing what they've done for the church um, in their time. And they give us an example so that we will do for the church in our time. And um, it's important, really, to know our history and those who have been part of our history. Absolutely. I'm sure that every, each and every one of us has in our family more than one example of a good Catholic Christian person who didn't go around you know, putting their religion in people's face, you know, talking about it. They lived it. They were a walking example of what the Lord wants us to do with our lives. Lead good lives, be, you know, honor God, love God above all things, and our neighbors as ourselves. Be good to our neighbors, be good to the members of our family, look out for them, care about them. And without, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to do it without scolding, without being judgmental. Just find out what their what con their concerns are, what their needs are, and help them through difficult times. You know, um, that reminds me of what happened to me on uh, May 27th. We had the graduation of um, the class of Our Lady of Mercy School in Merced. And um, at the end of Mass, um, some of the students came up to say, thank you, Father, and we're going to miss you. And... Um, and one student came up and with a big smile and said, no more religion classes. And I said to him, yes, now you have to start living it. And uh, he said, yes. And um, I thought uh, it's so important for us always to realize that, um, yes, we need to know our faith, and that's important. But living the faith every day is the more important thing because of the fact that people are always looking at us and um, they're aware of who we are and they're aware of the organization that we belong to. And if we are not showing our faith and its value to us, um, then what good is the knowledge of our faith? Exactly. You know? yeah, I had a, a wonderful example with one of my aunts. She helped raise me and she didn't go around proselytizing people. You know, I'm a Catholic and you should be a Catholic. None of that, none of that. She lived it. She reached out to, you know, whoever was in need. If you were sick, she would be there to be by your side. Uh, she didn't have a lot of money. So she planted roses and she would take roses to people who were ill as a sign of comfort. And she would pray with them and she'd be there in their rough in the rough times in their lives and just a simple thing like taking roses to someone's bedside mm -hmm. i mean that's a powerful statement of concern and also fellowship and we need to realize then that we don't have to be wealthy to show forth love and generosity bye bye <laughs>